Omar Lopez Castellanos, and this is my research based presentation on the operating systems and firewalls that we have ex were exploring in service group one. So we're bas I'm basically just going to go over quickly on Microsoft Server 2019, Ubuntu Server 20 LTS, their corresponding firewall programs, suggestions on how to harden the security around them, discuss their benefits, and we just wrap it up. I'm going to be examining the four technologies that are assigned. Microsoft Server 2019, Ubuntu Server 20 LTS, and their corresponding firewall software as I just previously stated. Beginning with Microsoft Server 2019, I explored a quick specs di document primarily from Hewlett Packard to discuss to learn the primary benefits of this technology. One thing that caught my eye was the hybrid platform that allows it to make transition between different tech investments easy, such as different versions of software or operating systems. So it creates a unique hybrid platform coming with enhanced security, such as Defender Advanced, which we'll actually be discussing further on. And another innovation is known as hyperconverged infrastructure. So imagine having a centralized deposit repository where one could perform all the functions of a traditional data center like storage, computation, networking management. This technology is integrated into server. And it also it integrates with Azure, so it's not just involved with digitized data storage, it's also involved with cloud-based security and storage, like syncs, backups, and it includes a technology known as advanced threat analytics, which would allow which allows built-in protection and monitoring of what is occurring within the server's function. Then the Linux-based server that we are assigned is Ubuntu Server 20 LTS. Ubuntu, like any Linux program, is open source, so there's no better resource to explore than the blogs, the creators, the developers within Ubuntu. So it includes the traditional two-factor authentication, which is becoming increasingly relevant within uh, today's security. Almost every application is now recommending that we implement two-factor authentication, which means we would not only have a password, but we would also have to have include a second layer of security, such as PIN numbers or text authentication or authentication applications, such as Duo, which we use in Kennesaw State. It also includes supports for Amazon Web Services and Azure, so that's always good because these are two of the three giants within cloud-based uh, business programs. It also One thing that also caught my eye was the automatic update. So every time the system would boot, if we're using the live installer program, every time the system boots, it will update. Cool. So the firewall technologies that we're exploring is the Windows firewall, otherwise known as Windows Defender firewall with advanced security. It's host-based, meaning that it's primarily centered within the computer or device that it's installed in. It's two-way, meaning that it has two-way conversations between the clients and the servers. And like any traditional firewall, it focuses on filtering traffic within the network and blocking any unwanted traffic. And includes the common protocols that we all know, like file transfer protocol, small mail transport protocol, etc. Whereas Linux IP tables is again, like any Linux system, it's customizable, it's a very flexible firewall, it can be managed and customized and uh, configured to however we wish. And it includes three different chains on which it manages connections, such as input where it controls any connections that are incoming, controls how the system will respond. Then there's forward where it's more specialized and it deals with outside connections like non-local, meaning they come from external sources because 
if we're familiar with router technology, we traditionally do not receive all of our packets from their source. They have to go through different ports and different uh, pathways before they converge and we receive our message. Then there is output, meaning it controls the behavior for any connections that we're going to be sending outside of our system, better known as uh, like, for example, pings or requests for connections. And it deals with connection requests three ways. So it would either allow the connection or drop it as if forgetting it, pretending it never existed. And it's best used for protecting the identity of the of our host system. Then there's reject. So this would send a message out to any potential intruder that they're not welcome or that our system is unavailable. So what are my suggestions to harden? You'd be surprised that many of the best hardening techniques for operating systems and firewalls don't have to be rooted in a lot of technical knowledge. It can be just common sense. First, we would close any redundant ports, anything that we would not need it with to connect within the networks. That's what we use. And the best way to do that is to go to the server, find any and all the enabled rules and disable them. It's simple because it is. And by leaving ports that we do not require, we would give potential attackers more openings in which they can exploit better vulnerabilities that they can exploit to come into the system, creating more opportunities to initiate their attacks. So review and remove it, but be thorough because if you jump the gun and you might end up removing a service that it's actually essential, we could be doing more harm. Then there's the static IP addresses, meaning the IP addresses that do not change, that we do not modify. I'm not going to go into detail about this a lot because this is, this requires further research that's outside the scope of this assignment. But one thing we can do is just like how we're disabling any redundant ports, disable any services that we're not using. And you have to really be aware of the environment in which we're tackling this matter. Lastly, there's the monitoring issue. So we would have to make sure that the server can keep accurate track of logging. And I've discovered two different applications that would be best suited for this, known as Windows Remote Management Service and Event Collector. So to collect and report data on what is the activity going on between the servers and the clients. And I've included the commands in which we can install them via the command prompt. And if anyone's curious about what it means by quick config or QSYN, it mean it's self-explanatory. It comes with its own customized configuration. So, and we're advised to maintain the default settings in any program we use unless we're knowledgeable enough in which to customize or configure the settings ourselves. And open the firewall and go to the permissions just to ensure that these two applications are permitted for you. Now IP tables requires a bit more focus on being aware of what we're configuring. So the first thing we would do is disable any ability to log in directly to the root account because it's going to come back to haunt us. If we logged in and then forgot to log out, we would be exposing highly sensitive information about our account to other users and admins. So that's why sudo is recommended. So that way we can execute any root level commands when needed and then keep our, our distance from the root account at other times. So there are multiple options in which we can disable the, the root login. The first command in the list is pretty much describes deleting the password from the information logs. 
Second is where we would lock the account. We would ensure that it's not visible to anybody who wishes to know the password. And then where we would also manipulate the file that manages the passwords. Now, I know this seems a little harsh because we're probably familiar or have at least seen these different protocols, you know, but they're very welcoming to outsiders. All you would need is a good packet sniffer and you would be able to intercept any usernames, passwords, or commands that are shared during the communication between clients and servers. And we do wish not to expose this critical vulnerability. So the, the command that I have included at the bottom is very lengthy, but it ensures that these three different services will not be a nuisance towards our goal within hardening these servers. And that's my recommendation. Finally, it's using and in installing and using Secure Shell, SSH. Because the previous protocols that I mentioned, they're plain text based, meaning that all communication is based on plain text. And that's what enables such easy interception from packet snippers. Whereas Secure Shell uses encryption. So even if they captured it without any encryption key to decrypt the encrypted messages, they're just going to be getting a bunch of hullabaloo, a bunch of hash and hullabaloo. It's essentially worthless. So before you would install SSH, if it's not included within IP tables yet, is to update the system, upgrade it, make sure everything's up to speed, and then install it as a client. Another critical step that we would have to take is how to save the rules after a restart, because after we install rules whenever we're rebooting we want to make sure that the rules are permanent then we would that would mean having to make it persistent now ubuntu server is based on debian that means the, the commands that i've included at the bottom support that but if we're using servers that are based on other distributions of linux i would recommend researching for those particular distributions so first we would have to install the IP tables persistent package. That's what the sudo command is for. And any rules that we install there that in which we're guided by the server notes, these two commands enable us to save them to their corresponding IPv4 and IPv6 files because we do not yet know which protocol is preferred. So having accommodating for either situation is the best way to go. And that pretty much concludes our presentation. You can see I did a lot. I had to do a lot of research to make sure I had as many facts straight as possible. And I wanted to make sure that one singular source for information. Because this is a very complex matter and research is essential here. That means we have to make sure that whatever actions we commit, whatever protocols we're enabling or disabling, whatever actions we take, it's grounded within common knowledge and that everybody in the group is on the same page. Anyways, that concludes my presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Good night.